In this video, I'm going to continue talking about acids and bases. And so in this one, I will be looking at it in terms of frontier orbitals. So that is the highest occupied molecular orbital and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. And so to start off, I will look at this reaction here. So ammonia with H plus making ammonium. And so these are the molecular orbital diagrams. This is the one for ammonia right here. And I wanted to put this here just to show where this side of the, uh, of the molecular orbital diagram for ammonium comes from. And so we have up here, uh, these ones right there. We have this uh, A1 here, which I kind of put down here. Uh, and then we have this a1 here, which is our highest occupied molecular orbital, then these degenerate E orbitals right here, and then this A1 down here. And so uh, that's just to kind of show where these ammonia uh, molecular orbitals come from. Uh, and so we'll look at it a little bit closer here. And so we have here for our ammonia, we have the highest occupied molecular orbital right there. And then for the H plus the hydrogen, we have the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital right there. And these are pretty close in energy. And so we will see that we end up with these three uh, tetrahedral uh, molecular orbitals right here. Uh, and then we have uh, this right here, which is the, uh, the this, well, it's this sort of um, S orbital down here. There's A1 symmetry molecular orbital right there. And so when we put those together, we end up with this tetrahedral symmetry on our ammonium that looks like this. Uh, and so we can see where the uh, four different bonds come from. They are uh, these ones right here. So those are the four different bonds that we are looking at in our ammonium. And so this is, as I said, a tetrahedral uh, symmetry. So these are all the symmetry operations on tetrahedral. And we end up with uh, something that looks like this, where these phi's are the atomic orbitals uh, that we have here. And so if we look at that, we end up with our symmetry adapted linear combination being the A1 and the P2 symmetry right there. And so that has to do with the S orbitals here and then the P orbitals right there. And so these are our T2 uh, symmetry adapted linear combinations going on right here. And so we see that this phi one right here is always positive and that would uh, be represented by that right there. And so if we call this the positive PZ, uh, PX and PY, we see that those are always sort of pointing at least adjacent to this one right here. But then we see that we have these negatives. So the uh, PX here is negative three and a negative four. And that makes sense because this would be our negative right here. And that's pointing in the direction of this four and three. And you could uh, look through the same thing for these alternating negative signs on here for the different P orbitals. And so uh, then sort of looking more in general. So with the ammonium, we have these, uh, the highest occupied molecular orbital and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital being very similar in energy. And so once we have established these uh, symmetries here, then we have to look at the differences in energy of the highest occupied molecular orbital and lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So if we take uh, H2O as our reference compound, then if we look at the interaction of water with solid calcium, so calcium metal, which has these 4S orbitals uh, from calcium as the highest occupied molecular orbital and the water hydrogen uh, as the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, then water acts as an oxidant uh, because 
the calcium for us, highest occupied molecular orbital, have much higher energy than the hydrogen uh, LUMO here. And so the electrons are going to sort of transfer from the calcium to the hydrogen. And so we end up with this reaction right here. We have these two waters, this calcium. So we end up with calcium 2 plus, two OH minuses, and then this hydrogen given off as gas. And so that's looking at if we have the uh, the highest the highest occupied molecular orbital as being much greater in energy than the uh, than the uh, lowest occupied molecular orbital. Uh, but then if we get to where they are much closer in energy, uh, so we have the chloride here with these 3p orbitals only slightly higher in energy than the hydrogen LUMO, then we instead form an adduct. So we form this adduct right here. And so this becomes uh, more like acid-base chemistry as we understand it uh, with the Lewis acid and Lewis base uh, concept of acids and bases. Uh, when these these uh, highest occupied molecular orbital and lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals are much closer in energy. But in this case, we still have the uh, highest occupied molecular orbital slightly higher than the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. Uh, but then if we sort of move in the other direction, so we have the magnesium where the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital are these vacant 3s orbitals, which are uh, slightly lower uh, in energy than the 2px orbital on the water oxygen atom. Uh, we again form this adduct right here. Uh, and so that's, uh, again, our Lewis acid and base chemistry. But then if we uh, move in the other direction where we have uh, uh, a much lower energy, uh, lower lowest unoccupied molecular orbital than the water's highest occupied molecular orbital, then the water instead acts as a reducing agent. And so we have the water here plus the uh, fluoride, and it goes to these this 4F minus plus 4H plus, and then oxygen gas. And so what all this kind of comes down to is we can come up with a somewhat more rigorous definition of our Lewis acids and Lewis bases. Uh, and so a Lewis base has a highest occupied molecular orbital of suitable symmetry to interact with the uh, lowest unoccupied molecular orbital of a Lewis acid. And so this is saying that if we have the right symmetry, then the uh, the Lewis base has this highest occupied molecular orbital, which will interact with the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital of the Lewis acid. And so, you know, that goes along with our definition from before that a Lewis base is a nucleophile and a Lewis acid is an electrophile because the Lewis base has this highest occupied molecular orbital, uh, which is going to seek out nucle nuclei, where the Lewis acid has this lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, which can then be filled by electron uh, pairs, by lone pairs of electrons from a Lewis base. And so those are electrophiles. Uh, but anyway, that is uh, sort of looking at the frontier orbitals of acid-base reactions. Uh, we'll continue sort of using these ideas of the highest occupied molecular orbital and lowest unoccupied molecular orbital in the videos to come. And so this was just kind of an introduction to this idea of using the frontier orbital theory for acid and base reactions. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next one.